Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Tech Team Tronics channel. Today, we're going to be replacing thermal paste on the CPU. We're going to be cleaning the computer for better performance. What we have is the current temperatures just starting up and idling and they are pretty high 36 degrees celsius with a high 37 degrees celsius but you ought to wait till i run cinebench and see what happens um so we could get a lot better out of these temperatures and thus we could get better performance so here i'm speeding up cinebench and just monitoring the temperatures as I go and look at how high they go. Now, the thing is, this thing's cooking. And I mean, tops were getting up to 46 degrees Celsius. So this is the Athlon X2 processor, so I, I don't expect it to, you know, rank very high. And it is a very old computer. And what the purpose of this is, is to test out some thermal paste and see how good it is and how good of a temperature reduction we can get through this whole process. All right, so that's where I'm at with this PC. Very low on the totem pole. The temperatures are, you know, pretty high, 42, 46 degrees Celsius, low 35 degrees Celsius. And, you know, that's essentially what we have. So if you want to improve those temperatures, the thing to do is this project, but let's look at why. Looking at the case, it's running with the, you can see all the dust, bunnies and everything all over the place it's kind of sickening i've never really cleaned this computer before and it is nasty sure i can't believe how dusty it is you know what i mean it's insane i can't even believe it myself So the first test is we're going to use the blower to clean the dust from the motherboard processor power supply and case area. We need to provide the cleanest environment to replace the thermal paste. All right, so you can see there's a lot of dust coming out of there. And that's just from the power supply. This is crazy how like much dust compare, co collects over the years. It's amazing. So we'll spend some time getting that dust up because it's very important, as I said before, to get a very clean environment to do this in because you don't want any dust interference. So the more dust that we can remove from this case, the better off we are. And I'm using the door beam portable hand duster blower that I reviewed in a previous video. But this, it just amazes me and astonishes me as to how much dust is sitting in this case. No wonder I was getting the temperatures that I was getting with that previous run. Nothing was cooling down and the more dust that you have blocking the individual heat sink uh, fins the less air can get through, the more of a problem you have getting the cooling done. So, I'm just using it as a very low sign. Next, we want to disconnect the motherboard wires in order to remove the motherboard from the case. We must disconnect all the wires, the case, the drives, power supply, and everything. So, here it goes. First, I'm going for the uh, 
the uh, CPU, additional power to the CPU, and I disconnected the fan header. I didn't need to disconnect that fan header, but ultimately I did need to disconnect that head fan header because we're going to take that all apart. Now I'm going for the main DPU, uh, main board power. And that's kind of tricky. There's a you know a latch on the back of it that you have to kind of get in there with tight fingers and press in order to release that from the motherboard. Quite a task. Got to have small hands to really do it. I mean, you could do it with larger hands, but it's going to be tough. But you can make it easier on yourself by doing it by one hand. Get behind the wire. Get the wire. Then I go for the uh, data cables, I believe. And they are easy to remove because they're kind of straight up and down, and they got a latch. And, you know, press and then pull the whole cable assembly out from the main board. Alright, so there's a few more like power LEDs and front case LED type wires that we have to pull. And we have to pull the card, the uh, USB ports, and that sort of thing from the main motherboard. And you have to kind of have a memory of where they go. Uh, I didn't take a picture, but I have this video to help me out. It need to be, but I, it was pretty much self-explanatory. Some cases are easier to do than others, and that's the way it is. All right, so we're going to unscrew the motherboard from the case in order to do this safely. We must remove the cooler from the CPU and the motherboard. We must unscrew the motherboard from the case. All right, so I grab my handy screw. We start to remove various screws that are placed throughout the motherboard. They're placed logically on this motherboard. I could say it was easy to find them and easy to get them out. Okay. And so here I'm just going screw for screw. And the screw is magnetic, which helps things a lot. That'll prevent you from dropping the screws on the motherboard and just, you know, risking any kind of damage or static electricity type damage. So there are just a few more screws to remove from this. And uh, we'll be able to like simply pull it up from the case. Just one more, two more. You don't want to miss a screw because then you can save, you know, if you, if, you, if you don't miss a screw, you'll save yourself frustration by missing. So, I want to make sure that we get every screw that is in there and they're obviously marked and um, what they do is and you want to put them in a safe place so that you don't lose them just as we do with the, you know the, every screw that we pull out of the, uh, the board or our computer we're going to gently pull the motherboard from the case please ensure all wires and anything obstructing the motherboard from being removed is out of the way out comes the motherboard real simple And then I'm going to move the case. We're going to remove the fan and the heat sink from the GPU or the CPU and unscrew the screws and unhatch. So I got the motherboard laying up on the table. First things first, there's some screws that we have to remove to get the fan out of the way.
the, and you know, I'm using a magnetic type of screwdriver so I can pull those screws all the way up if needs be, or pull them up just enough so that I can pull them out of the way. Because uh, you can't exactly pull those screws out of the top of the fan uh, casing them. But you can pull them out where they screw in. And you want to keep them nicely placed, place them in a nice safe location so that you are able to retrieve them and install them when it's time to reinstall the fan. But we're going to clean that fan up because aerodynamically it's, you know, not working at its most efficient when you have like dust bunnies and such on there. And sometimes it takes a little bit more than running the, the, dirt, the air duster. You might have to get in there and you might have to clean the fan blades individually by touching, you know, with a, you know, some cotton ball or a cotton swab fan, because you can just see the dust on it, you know, and it's just amazing. So you see that the cooler piece is not getting the most effective cooling because there's dust stuck in there. And that dust is so hard that we could not get it out. We needed to use the assistance of the brush in order to get it out. And the more you clean this out, the better it is. The better cleaning, um, cooling that you get. As long as the fins are not obstructed. So while I'm at it, the cleaning areas of the motherboard that I cannot access normally while it's in the case because it's tight space, you know. Mm. Now we're going to clean the old thermal case with 90% rubbing alcohol or alcohol wipes. For the application of the new thermal case to be effective, we must clean up the old thermal case with rubbing alcohol or alcohol pads. So there's like enough of it that it was like kind of like stuck in there so it was imperative that we clean that off so that when we apply the new thermal paste it makes the proper connection with the heat sink the cpu and the thermal paste for adequate cooling so it took me a while to get because there was some stuff that was really you know deep stuck on there residual because that's been on there I've never looked at that I never opened that up I've never changed the thermal paste on it since I got it I got it back in 2011 around that time so you got to figure that thermal paste is old and corroded like you know but not as effective because as you can see with the early temperatures we had they were pretty high so I'm just taking the blower and just blowing some of that solvent off so that we are able to get to the next step. So it looks nice and clean, one as clean as possible, so that there's no interference with the thermal paste. And uh, no, you know, diminished cooling results. Now we're taking a alcohol wipe to the CPU itself, and we're cleaning off the residual thermal paste from the last application. And it wasn't that bad, you know, but it was nice and easy to get clean. It looked like, uh, you know, the thermal paste was dried up, expected. So we got it all cleaned up and we're almost ready to apply that thermal paste. We just meant double check to make sure it's clean and while I'm at it, I take liberty to clean some of the components around, such as the uh, any any dust that I see that didn't get like blown by the duster. I'm wiping up with alcohol wipe and making sure that it does not get on my processor because the last thing you want is the air bubble between the application of thermal paste and your, uh, your CPU and your thermal heat sink. 
So essentially, we're going to just blow dry that a little bit on the low pressure with the duster. Get that dried off. And then we're going to get ready to apply that thermal paste. So we're going to apply the new thermal paste compound to the CPU. We're going to apply a reasonable amount to the CPU die. We're going to be using Arctic MX4 Premium Performance Thermal Paste. Um, I have no complaints about it. It's pretty good. Got it for like less than 10 bucks on Amazon. Okay. So here we are. We're applying just a generous amount of thermal paste. Nice and cleanly applied. And then in a very short amount of time, I'm going to apply the uh, heat sink on top of it. We're going to place the heat sink on the CPU. The heat sink will flatten the spread and the thermal paste. So it will spread it adequately out to the four corners of the die of the chip and make adequate contact with the heat sink. We're going to have to position it properly. Okay, then I'm at to bring the bracket. We're going to fasten the heat sink on the CPU with the bracket. This will further flatten the compound, thus making an adequate connection between the dye, the chip, the thermal compound, and the heat sink. That will just apply further pressure and apply consistent pressure for the installment of the motherboard and such. All right, so we're going to reinstall the CPU fan on the heat sink. Be sure to screw in the fan on the heat sink. There are four screws that hold it on. I retrieved four screws, so I'm good to go. And that wasn't the screwdriver I wanted to use. I had to pull up the other screwdriver because it's any enough to go through the top screw hole of the fan and get down to screw as we see here. All right, it took me a while to get this screwed in properly, but with a little work and, you know, a little sweat and tears, I was able to get it to screw on. So, Everything's, you know, being reinstalled at this point. And you just want to make sure the, that the screws are positioned in the hole properly because it's easy to get those screws mispositioned. I couldn't believe it. I did it just right there. And it's no big deal. You could just pick it up and, you know, try it again. Okay. So you just take your time with this and you don't want to miss a screw. We're going to reinstall the motherboard into the case after all the screws of the fan were installed. So I'm bringing the case back up on the table. We're going to slide that motherboard in. You have to angle it my way to slide it in the case. And we have to make sure it makes good contact with the back plate or the, the IO shield. And it's free of any wires or anything like that. Okay, so the basics are, you know, you just want to get that motherboard lined up in there properly on the uh, standoffs. 
and the uh, Ayo shield. Sometimes the wires will get in your way and you have to remove them as you go. I made the mistake of not checking the IO shield first. <sighs> and this time I had to make sure that it lined up with the IO shield. All right, next we want to grab our handy screwdriver and the screw. And we're going to start screwing the motherboard in. All right, so when we're done with this, we had six screws that came off. Six screws are going back on. We're going to make sure they're tight, but not too tight where we crack the motherboard. To do any damage like that is hand tight enough where nothing's jiggling around to pick things back up okay so it takes a minute just to get all the screws in bear with me here This is some Tech Tintronics work at its finest. You want to make sure you get every screw in there as tight as possible, but not too tight to the point where you damage things. And it's important that you make that connection between the case and the motherboard so you don't have any issues going down the road. All right, so I'm satisfied that the all screws are in, so we're going to reconnect all wires to connections to the motherboard. Remember, all the wires connect to the plugs but pretty much self-explanatory and they should, you know, help you out uh, by the shape of them and the position. Because I didn't change too much about the case, so too much, so much of it should remain the same. All right, so this just takes a minute to get everything reconnected. And then once you get everything reconnected, we're gonna check it over to make sure we're not missing a cable or two. Make sure everything's at the right place. And then we're gonna fire it up. All right, so. We have almost all the cables done. Completely installed. It's very important because if you don't get all the cables installed, you're going to run into issues down the line. Now we're plugging in. Now we're plugging in the SATA cables. I remember it, where the position of them were, and put them in. To the proper position, if I remember. This was one of the. This is the e-machines machine. This was one of the easiest cases that you can actually do that type of work on. This motherboard is nice and small. Now we're booting it up, and we're just going to take a look at some of the temperatures that we get. Um, I think it's quite remarkable what we see, based off of what I've seen thus far. All right, so it's just going to take a minute to boot for us. I'm sorry about the display driver. I couldn't get the right resolution for it for this video, but it looks fine as it is. I think we'll go with it. So get logged in.
and see how things load. We're going to take a look at some temperatures real quick. Wait for those temperatures to load. And there's a remarkable improvement there for that's what we're seeing here, zoomed in. And then uh, I'm going to do a comparison between the old and the new, the uh, before and the after. So this is what it was looking like before I did the upgrade or the, the change in the cooling uh, pace and the cleaning. This is after I did the project amazing that's what kind of results you get with this thermal paste well hey you know if you like the video be sure to like the video on your way out be sure to subscribe thank you for watching if you're um, if you have a comment question leave a comment below I can't guarantee I'll get to it soon enough but I'll try my best and once again, thanks for watching and have a nice day.